Certainly. Um, it is a pleasure and honor to be with you today in celebration of Autism Awareness Month. And as I see it, I see autism awareness as building a solid platform in which to accept autistic people, to work with the characteristics, to get into the autistic person's world. And what I mean by that is that at 18 months, I was struck by the regressive autism bomb, like about 30% of us, where I lost functional communication, I had meltdowns, I withdrew from the environment, and I became a very autistic little kid. Uh, there was so little known about autism in those days that it took my parents a year to find a place for diagnosis. And when they did, the doctor said, this kid is too sick, send him to an institution. Well, fortunately, my parents they advocated on my behalf, like we're seeing increasing numbers of parents do today. They advocated on my behalf and convinced the school to take me in about a year. And that is important for parents to do, to advocate for their children, to get them the supports that they need. So what did my parents do during that year? Well, today we could term it as an intensive home-based early intervention program. There was a lot of movement. There was music. There was sensory integration. There was narration. There was imitation. At first, my parents tried to get me to imitate them. And that's imitation is a time-honored educational strategy. However, perhaps due to a difference in mirror neurons, many aut young autistic children don't imitate. So then my parents flipped it around and they imitated me. And once they did that, I became aware of them in my environment and they were able to move me along. And I believe the key implication is that you have to meet the autistic person where they are. What is interesting to that person? So if, for example, as Temple talks about, if the, if the autistic person is interested interested in drawing horse heads and that's all they do, that's where you start. However, it is important, as Temple commonly says, to stretch that person. Why don't you draw the entire horse or draw the horse in a stable? And my parents with me, I was making autistic sounds, I was flapping my hands. That is what they did until I recognized them in my environment. And then they were able to move me along. And they got to a point where speech had begun to return at age four. At age four is when I developed my first, you might say, autistic interest. I was found by my parents taking apart a watch with a sharp knife. I'd pop open the back, I'd take out the motor, I'd remove some of the gears, I'd spin them around and put it all back together again. The watch still worked and there weren't any pieces left over. My parents, upon noticing this, soon provided all kinds of other devices to take apart, and they'd sit with me and make sure I got them back together again. And that is an important thing for parents to do, to ask the question, what is my autistic child interested in? What is it that grabs them? And that becomes a key in which to establish that relationship. And then from there, you begin to move on. So even at that early age, possibly it could have looked like that I could be a watchmaker or a watch repairman. I would have needed a lot of support. At least at that time, it looked like I would have needed a lot of support in communication and living as an adult, but at least this was something that I could do. So, uh, my advice to parents is to observe your child on the spectrum, 